So I've just had a quick look around them everywhere up top. Obviously the first thing I've found is these access steps here are completely twisted. They've obviously left them out um, and then backed onto a bay. So I cannot get them out of there at all now. Um, obviously it's splitting, it's completely twisted. Um, it could probably just bend this bottom bit down Yeah, I could probably just bend this bottom bit, this bottom section, bend it back round because it's sort of been bent upwards like that. So if we bend it back down at this back edge, that should free that off. So we'll give that a go and just try and free these off. Uh, next thing I've noticed is the interior lights aren't working on this trailer. Now, there is a little switch on the outside here as you can see that don't look great as it is and when i've opened it up that is rust that so i'm gonna just whip this off and have a look no right so you should be able to see me there I'm just going to whip this, uh, whip the switch off and see what we can see. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice full of sludge. <laughs> Let's have a look. Look at that there. Oh, lovely golden cheese. Hey, look at all that there. Wow. All that in there. Come on, that is bloody terrible, that. That is proper terrible. Looks like something you'd spread on your toast or something. Bloody minging. This wire's burnt out. Oh, I just flicked myself in the face with it. Oh, I'm gonna have to put you down. I don't know, can you see it? I've got a bit stuck to my face. You can feel it. I'm gonna have to put you down, so I've got both my hands. So, now you've seen. Only a really little bit on my face. So now you've seen the golden goodness. Let's get it repaired. That is a proper shit design, that I tell you. Really, really shit design. So what I'm going to have to do is, obviously I don't have one of these switches with me, so I'm just going to wire it out, I'm going to hardwire the lights so they're on all the time, it's better than them not working at all, you know, if they're on all the time that's much better than them not working at all. So let's go get something to repair this way. me up from Amazon. He didn't sound like he was from Amazon anyway. And then as soon as I said, what, you're from Amazon, he put the phone down. You know, they're just getting lazy now, scammers. Every single day I get scam phone calls, every single day. So, I don't really trust anybody who phones me. Anybody that phones me out of the blue, I don't trust you. Why should I? I wasn't expecting a phone call. Why should I trust you? So obviously this has had an issue before because somebody's wired the earth, that's the earth wire there. So somebody's wired the earth together. So all we're gonna do is do the same but with the live wire. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this off and 
heat shrink it because someone has just been lazy and just put a butt connector on it. I swear to God, if that's someone from Amazon. I bet it is. Didn't even answer that time. <laughs> oh, so annoying. Leave me the feck alone. You know? Just my phone number's on the internet. For anybody to find, I get spammed. Drives me up the wall. I'm sure anybody who is sort of self-employed or runs their own business and have got the number plastered all over the internet, I'm sure you'll be the same. I think before, before I heat shrink anything and put it all away, I am going to turn the lights on. See if they're working. Right, so the lights are working now. They're a bit dim. So as you can see, the lights are working. They're a bit dim. My batteries in my van are a bit shit, to be honest. This other one that was already done, this connection here, that we're gonna we're gonna redo. Obviously, get a better connection. Um, but they're, they're most likely dim because my my van batteries are uh, they're probably only on 22 volts. They're uh, they're on the last legs. They really are. Um, they've had a hard life because of power tail lifts with them. And they're only van batteries, they're not actually truck batteries, they're only van batteries. So and they've been in me they've been in that van for about four years, powering tail lifts, powering lights on the trailers, powering everything anything I need really. Um, and I've got I've got like a split charge system coming off the battery off the battery on my van that I can swap the charge over to each battery. Obviously I've got two 12 volt batteries in the back. That are wired together to make a 24 volt system that I can use. So I've got to quit, keep manually swapping them over. Um, and I forget, obviously, I forget until they're dead and then I have to swap them over and get my engine running and whatever else. Right, so we've got the two butt connectors fit. I'll just double check the lights again. Right, so the lights are on. We've got these butt connectors fit but we need to melt the ends down to give a better seal obviously whoever done that last one hadn't melted it down so there's water getting inside that I mean there's water getting inside this little box here and I'm gonna to have to report that I mean what I'm gonna do as well before I close it all back up because it's got a it's got a hole drilled in the back and someone sealed it from the back I want to seal it from inside really seal it from inside and then that should stop any water getting in there but they're, they're never they're never foolproof these external electrical boxes they're really not so really gentle heat just giving it a waft back and forth ah you're burning me it's this wind right that is spot on now so we've wired out this switch, this switch is not doing anything anymore. There's loads of crap in here as well. Not ideal at all, these out, like outdoor electrical boxes, they're really crap. Seems like instead of stopping shit getting in, it just collects it. You know? So instead of preventing it, it causes it. Yeah, I've done a temp repair on it, but this uh, this electrical box is terrible. It's so bad. They're absolute crap. So I'm going to report it. Obviously, the switch is completely dead now. That's no good to nobody. That. Um, but I'll, oh, in fact, let me get some sealer before that. I said I was going to seal it, didn't I? 
for I bought this black silicon sealer which is it's really horrible stuff because it sticks to everything it's a nightmare but it's good it's really good at sealing shit like this Nice big splodge in there. And I'm gonna just work it in with my finger in all the nooks and crannies. Make sure it's bloody sealed. Right, I've probably used way more than what I needed to there, but it's not gonna cause any damage or all so give you a quick nosey so obviously I've just smeared a bit of sealant around where the where the wires come through and I've smeared it underneath and in between as well so when that sets that should form a really nice seal there we shouldn't have to worry about water getting in this but as I said these electrical boxes are shit so right so that's that done anyway well temp repaired no, you can have a nosy at me trying to fix this as well if you like. Yeah, you'll be able to see me from there, you should be able to anyway. So, really simple. Obviously, this ladder here is not coming out of that at all. That is not going to come out of there. So, I'm just going to get my pipe wrench. And try and wedge it on this rearmost bar here because this is the one that this is the one that bends. Every time someone who's had too much breakfast sits on it and stands on it, uh, it bends. Really, really simple. Yeah, really, really simple. You should have been able to see what I was doing quite well there. So just this bottom bar here, um, it bends up like that, and then you see the catch there. Obviously, that locks it in place. Make sure it's locking. Yeah. So lift that up, pull it out, and as you can see these ladders are resting against this so anytime someone who's had a big breakfast gets on this it bends in it bends this that way which bends the rear lip up um, and also this has had a whack you can tell it's had a whack it's got a big dent here that's lifted up but you know it's only a set of access steps in it it's not like it's gonna stop you from using your trailer is it no it's not it's not a safety issue yeah so we we've done those two repairs obviously we've done the interior light switch and the rear access steps um we're about halfway through now so i'm just going to put you down carry on with the inspection and if i find anything else i'll i'll get you back out yeah i'm gonna put them under there I'm going to climb in right here. Right, so as you can see, we're under the trailer here. Um, I'm halfway through, I've done the rear axle. Um, I'm up to the second axle. But as I've mentioned before in my previous videos, if you look out for rust marks, let me get a torch on my phone. Um, but if you look out for rust marks like that, you'll find loose bolts. That is the number one sign that that bolt is loose, okay? If we've got rust traveling down uh, the chassis from a, from a bolt, nine times out of 10, that bolt's gonna be loose. And that is what has happened today. Um, so, if you can see from here, so that's going to be banging about like mad that. 
So, not good, obviously, because that's your shock absorber. Um, and if, if that's rattling, like that, that's not going to be very good, is it? No. So, 36, I believe. That is the ticket. Oh, get out, get cut out. Sometimes you can just buzz this side and it tightens itself, so fingers crossed. Get on. What's going on here? There we go. Nope. That is spinning. So, we'll get this one on this side. Right. That is loud. Shit the bed, I just need some friggin' ear muffs on. The fucking ears are ringing. Um. Easy. Easy, easy, easy fix. If we just give this a, a wipe off with my hand. So I'll just get rid of all the the rust that's been coming down it. So then if another good mechanic sees that and sees a bit of rust running down, they're going to think it's loose. Um, no, it's just a good mechanic. Because a lot of mechanics nowadays in this trade, they don't even check half of this shit. You know? So... Obviously, I've checked everything else on this axle. I just I found that, so I, I finished checking it before I went and got my tools because just in case there was anything else I might need. Um, but I haven't greased it yet. So while you're here, these are your S cams here. Just give them a shake, make sure there's not loads of play in them, and we'll just give them a grease. So you've got, you know, this is your S cam, the big one bar is called your S cam or your S cam shaft or whatever. Um, on either end, you, here and then here, where we've just greased, you've got your outer and your inner S cam bearing or bush or whatever you want to call them. Um, here we've got the slack adjuster, obviously grease, grease, grease. We'll do this side. There we go. Boo! Right, so really easy repair for that one. And obviously, you've just seen me quickly grease the S cams. Um, so I'm going to turn you off because while I'm chatting, I just take ages <laughs> with shit. <laughs> I've noticed that since I started filming myself, jobs that would only take me maybe an hour are taking me an hour and a half now. Because <laughs> I'm just, I just enjoy chatting to you guys. So. That's a good time to turn you off, I think, while my phone's ringing. In fact, let's see what it is. See if it's another scam call. Oh, it could be, it could be. Hello, you rang early on. Did I? Yeah, what are uh, recording? Uh, let me have a look at my call list, mate, so I don't think I did. Alright, I had a missed call, I'm returning back, that's all. Alright, buddy, no worries. Okay, thank you, bye bye. See? Another person who I've not phoned today, I've barely made any phone calls today, but he's phoned me up saying he's returning a phone call. I've literally just put the phone down to somebody else before I got you out, while I was under here, looking at that, I had a phone call from a woman saying the exact same thing, saying, oh, hello, um, what, what do you want? And I'm like, what do you mean, what do I want? You phoned me. She's like, oh, no, I'm returning the phone call. I was like, well, I've not phoned you. 
She's like, yes you have, I've phoned in the number back, so on my call list. And you know, I believe her, but I've not physically phoned anybody, so somebody's spoofing my phone. Someone has spoofed my phone number. <sighs> you know, just to add to my stress of, like, fake and spam and scammy calls, sales calls, now I've got people returning ghost calls, apparently. So when I say my phone don't stop ringing, it really don't stop bloody ringing, it drives me up the wall. Right, anyway, turning you off, I'm gonna carry on. Hopefully I don't get you back out now because everything else is fine, but we'll see. Well, that didn't last long. Yeah, so I've only just put you down. Obviously this is the last axle I was testing. I've just crawled underneath. I looked up there. Now, as we can see, what I've just said previously, you find rust coming down from bolts. They're loose. Nine times out of ten, that bolt is loose. So, I have given it a quick check, but just for your viewing pleasure. We got another one. And we've got another one, and uh, I'll just give you a close-up as well. Ooh, we close-up. See? Rusty, rusty nuts. We don't like rusty nuts. No, we don't. Well, in fact, I like rusty nuts because they're easy to find. <laughs> See? I mean, I do go down these anyway. It's not like I just look out for rust. Um, I go down everything, so I go like the S-camps, give them a shake, operate everything, go give the, go give the um, shock absorbers a shake. Um, but you can see, that's loose. Hey, so, is it going to be real? Yeah, bolt's really loose. Same again. So it was offside middle and near side front. Shock absorber bolts loose. And as I say, for a trailer that's only a year old, or not even that, it's a bit surprising really. Oh, it's tight. Very tight. Right, I am putting you down now, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully I don't find anything else. Uh, we're almost done anyway, so I doubt we're going to find anything else. <sighs> but who knows. Oh shit, the bed, it's hot. 23! 23 degrees! Holy moly! So we're done for the day, it's uh, 20 to 4 so that's not bad, I think I'm going to get myself straight over the road for a pint tonight, why the bloody hell not eh, it's, uh, it's so dangerous living over the road from a pub, because whenever it's sunny, I just can't help myself, you know, it's just too enticing, a beer garden just over the road, with cold beer, <laughs> So that's what I'm going to do tonight, I think. Go for a couple of pints. Because it's frigging warm. It's too warm to go sit inside. It's too warm to really do all else. So I'm going to go have a pint. And decompress from the day. Right up against him. Oh, the pub. Ah, the pub. So, another day done. Yeah, I'm going to go for a pint, me. Definitely go for a pint. I deserve it.
I deserve it. Tell me, everybody. Tell me I deserve it. Tell me I deserve a pie. I do, do I? I do. What's everyone, what's everyone like drinking then? What's, what's everyone's go to beer or lager? Yeah, I used to just drink the shit, like Carlsberg, really. My favourite was Carlsberg Export years ago. Um, when I just drank shit beer all the time, like Carlin and Foster's and Carlsberg. Um, but I really like Moretti. I really like Madri. Those are my two favourite lagers, I'd probably say. Madri and Moretti. Um... You know what, I always used to turn my nose up to Brewdog. Always, always used to turn my nose up to it. I always found it quite bitter. Um, but their Hazy Janes, they are very nice. Yeah, the Brewdog Hazy Janes, they're probably, they're probably my favorite out of a can, by far. Say by far, but they're just expensive, aren't they? Saying that, one of those little cans is probably the same as having a full can of Carlsberg. Because I feel it after four of them cut can sizes, I do. <laughs> anyway, bloody waffling on, chatting shit, chatting out my ass. I'll see you on another one.